familiar with that sort of thing? Does anyone know what a confined space is? Yeah. Yep, so it's Especially if the zero is in fact zero. Yeah, so that's, it's a very confined or small space that's really not meant for human occupancy. Um, and if you have to go in it, the atmospheric conditions can be hazardous if you, if you don't check the conditions ahead of time to make sure there's enough oxygen. So we have a specific group that's trained to look for those sorts of things, to label these spaces, to make sure people don't go in them um, so that you, know, you can make it out again. Um, and then we also have the industrial hygiene area, which is very interesting if you're into um, more of like a field work kind of job in the shipyard. They sample things like lead, cadmium, asbestos, paint. Um, they, make, they go through all and do building assessments to make sure that there's nothing, because some of the, the shipyard's very old, so some of the buildings are very old. There may have been lead paint back then or asbestos and they get to go through and make sure that these conditions are okay for the employees um, that are working in there. And then everybody in the department had some sort of subject that they were experts in. Um, like I said, I was the PPE and hazard communication person, somebody was the lead person, um, somebody headed up the eh &S task teams. Um, any sort of topic, fall protection, hazard communication, confined spaces, there was one point of contact that you could ask all your questions to, and they had to be that expert in that area. So, that was my job about for the past, I guess for my first five, five and a half years at the shipyard. Um, when I, during my last year there at the shipyard um, in the health and safety department, I was given an opportunity to work for the vice president of Human, um, human resources and administration. So at the shipyard, eh &S falls under HR, basically. Um, some companies you'll see that, some you'll see that they fall under operations. It really just depends how they run their business. So I got to work for the um, vice president and I was doing special projects. This wasn't to replace the job I was already doing, it was an addition to, it was just, it was basically a leadership opportunity that I wanted to do um, to see where I could you know, maybe find another niche in the company that I would want to maybe work for. Um, so I would do special projects for her, any sort of um, presentation or big, large, all hands meeting, or um, really anything that she needed help with. She didn't have anyone on her staff to handle it, I would do for her. Um, and so that kind of led into me being able to see all different sides of the business. I got to see how the hiring process was, I got to see the budgeting process. Um, I got to see talent acquisition and the people that come to like CNU to do the career fairs. I got to see all the different sides of the business. And so a, a new job requisition opened for the same kind of job permanently under another vice president. And um, I had somebody come to me saying, you know, you, you should really apply for this. I was really nervous though because it had nothing to do with what I was comfortable with. Nothing that I, you know, I didn't think it had anything to do with what I majored in or you know what I studied and I was like I'm really gonna miss that side of things you know the sciencey side of things and so it was a big leap um, and I ended up getting um, the courage up to apply for it and it actually was a long process I interviewed and didn't hear for a long time <laughs> and I was kind of getting nervous because I, I started getting excited about it because it was it was a big jump it would be from an analyst position to a management position um, and which is kind of you know within five years of being in a company is is a little bit hard to do um, especially being young and and usually people in those positions are a bit older um, so eventually I heard back and March of last year I got a position as a manager of project management for the um, CVN 79 Kennedy carrier vice president uh, and so since then, I have been working, well, yes. We've heard it. There was a lot there. So, yes. um, so the Kennedy is a... Is the carrier. That's an aircraft carrier. Yes. So he is the vice president of the construction of that carrier. Um, and so I, I would work directly for him um, and basically do special projects. So my, my focus now, I guess, <laughs> is basically his business manager. Um, 
I work solely for the CVN 79 program, although I'll be now also helping with CVN 78, which is the Ford, the original of the Ford class, another carrier. Things that I do is I oversee any kind of business like the budget, um, which is very different for me. I was never a math person <laughs> ever really, um, but I've learned and, and it's been, and I actually really enjoy it now. Um, engagement is huge. Um, we have a, a specific company we work with on how to improve engagement throughout the company because it's something that's proven, you know, if you have higher engagement, you have higher quality um, or better quality with your work, you have more productivity, um, it's actually safer, you have less injuries when you have engaged employees, you have less environmental um, violations, things like that. You're, employees are more apt to come to work and follow the rules and enjoy being there. So one of my roles is to figure out how to increase engagement and how to upkeep that culture, how to change the culture from, you know, I'm just coming to work to work to get money, to get paid, to I really enjoy coming to work. You know, I've got your back. I've, I've got, you know, my, my mates back. So that's one of the big things that I work on. And I have little task teams um, called engagement champions that are on the waterfront that are kind of the eyes and the ears too. Um, and the same goes with inclusion and diversity and I think that's something large that's, that's happening here. I saw an email from Paul Triple today about it. Um, inclusion and diversity is huge. It kind of goes along with engagement. If you have employees that can't get along or that have these unconscious biases, it's going to be harder for you to work with somebody on your crew who maybe you're not so engaged with, or maybe you just don't understand their way of life or something like that. So we have to think of ways to make sure that everybody is included and that we embrace our diversity instead of letting it put up barriers between us. Um, business conduct and ethics, those things are also huge. You know, since we are a contractor for the Navy, um, we have to make sure that we're always putting in our time appropriately because um, essentially that's who's you know paying us to work so um, things like that you know harassment all the things that you have here at the university I'm I lead that part of our division to making sure people are doing their training and that sort of thing same with compliance I'm the advocate there so any compliance training that needs to happen um, whether it be environmental compliance or maybe contractual compliance those sorts of things um, I still get to see and oversee some safety and environmental stuff. I have kind of placed myself there though. <laughs> I don't think it was really part of the job, but um, I, I help out with the task teams in the areas. If they need something or can't get the support from their maybe supervisors, then they can feel comfortable coming to me and I can kind of help get things rolling for them. Um, and then I develop a ton of presentations and um, one of my favorite things that I get to do now is the rewards and recognition program. So going along with engagement, one of the biggest things is people want to be recognized for the job, the jobs that they're doing. They want to be recognized for have, being a job well done or, or something like that. Or maybe they did something ethically that, that, you know, just giving them a small meeting with the vice president who gets to shake their hand and say, thank you so much for doing what you're doing, you're making a difference, is huge. So our recognition scores have, have skyrocketed. We do um, excellence in action awards. Um, people who maybe work on a specific project for a quarter and they are ahead of schedule, they're under cost and had no injuries, we try to recognize those people so that um, they continue doing a job well done or other people from the outside see it and say, hey, I wanna do that. I wanna get rewarded. Um, so those are the kinds of the, the things that I do now and I guess my message to you is that, you know, even though I, I have that environmental science background and that's really my passion still to this day, um, and I would love to go back to it in the future, in, in a big company or in any industry that you may be going to work in, sometimes you have to move around and out of your comfort zone to learn a little bit more about the business so that you can go and move higher up in where you want to be because when you get to those higher levels, they expect you to know more than just your comfort. You know, they, they don't want you to stay in your swim lane. They want you to be all over the place and knowing how the different parts of the business runs. So, so hopefully that's what I can do. Um, 
I get to meet a lot of people this way too. Networking is huge. If you know people, now you know me at the shipyard. <laughs> um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Constantly hiring people if you're at that stage yet. Um, it's, it's only growing. We recently, I'm sure you've seen the Daily Press articles, have an, a new contract for two more carriers. So that puts you out, what, 20, 30 years of work. So it's, it's definitely stable and um, they pay well. They have good really good benefits, good vacation, those sorts of things. So I guess, any questions? I'll try to answer. If I don't have the answer, I will get back to you. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah. Questions for Brittany. Can I start off? I have one real quick. Uh, you always so, ask hard questions. I know. Well, you you teach this. You you um, you said, and I've, I've known for a long time that your passion is in environmental matters, and and everybody here has to pick a major, so everybody has something they hope is is where that passion resides. But then you have come to the realization that, at least in a big industrial organization, uh, to maybe be in a position to really make big environmental decisions, you've got to leave the environmental area for a while. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we all sensed your passion for whatever of the jobs you've been in, because clearly you enjoy working with people. I do. I really just love being and interacting with people. <laughs> So I'm gathering you can't build a ship without people. I didn't know that, but I, I gather that's the case. So, so maybe it doesn't bother you too much to do that. So it seems like you feel a lot of rewards mm -hmm. along that divergence. Just, you haven't really had a chance to look at where that could lead in a, that would put environmental decisions higher on your... I mean, is there any sense of that? I'm not really sure because this kind of came out of nowhere. So I'm kind of hoping that along the way, as I develop in this position, it was a brand new position when I got into it too, so I can kind of make of, of it what I, what I want pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm hoping that you know, maybe it will lead me back into um, the Environmental Health and Safety Department again, maybe a, a manager or director level, something like that. Um, when you have those small departments, sometimes you can get stuck where you are if you don't move out and come back just because there are so few places to move up when there's you know so many people that are your age you know what I mean like I guess I saw in my department that there were several managers who weren't ready to retire yet and I know that in order for me to get in that that place I might need to go elsewhere first to get the experience and that sort of thing leadership experience and and, and so forth which is very important, leadership experience. That's one of the things that um, throughout every interview that I've been in, and I've interviewed several places. I even interviewed outside the shipyard not too long ago um, for over at Pepsi. And it's always leadership questions. They always want to know how you've had to act as a leader, even though maybe you're not a manager of people, how do you get people to follow you? Those are really important things, especially in an environmental and health and safety position. You're not everybody's boss, but they have to follow the rules or you'll get fined. So how do you get them to follow what you're saying and the rules that you're enacting or that you're enforcing? So, you know, keep that in mind and in, in how, that's why I think I love interacting with people. <laughs> so. <clears throat> yes. As an environmental health and uh, safety specialist, did you find that there's a lot of on-the-job training that you didn't have quite from the classes you took in the major, and how willing were they to or willing were they to work with you for that sort of thing? Good question. So when I first got hired, I was very nervous because I was like, okay, I had schooling and stuff, but this is a very different environment. There are no wetlands here at the shipyard, so what am I going to do? And everybody had to, you know. I, I talk to many mentors and they're always like, they're never going to just put you out there. Especially somewhere like the shipyard, that's a dangerous environment. The first five, six, seven months, I shadowed people. I got training classes. Um, they're never just going to put you out there and, and expect you to know their way of doing things. So training, I've, I had more training than I ever needed to know. <laughs> So, and then also being the person that developed the training, I got to see that side of it too. 